The Juice Man video series presents Jay's favorite vegetable and fruit juice recipes with The Juice Man, Jay Cornish. This is volume one, Vegetable Juice Recipes. Today I'm going to show you some of my favorite recipes and juice combinations. I've always advocated organic produce whenever possible, and there's reasons for it. Um, unsprayed, unfertilized soil. Now, most of us don't have around the country or availability of organic produce. Now, I want you to know something. The carrot is a tuber, a root, and it's buried under the ground. Sprouting from the ground are leaves. And as the crop dusters spray, the sprays come down through the leaves and they impregnate themselves ever so slightly in that earth's crust. And it's very difficult to remove the pesticides from this area. So we wholeheartedly advocate cutting about a half an inch to place safe off the top, you see. So that's a very simple procedure. And I'm really serious about that. Cut off that. And plus, plus I'd like to show you something. A lot of the ends, if they've been stored, carrots have been stored for a length of time, the ends get a little bit off. So I, I, I have that option now when I have my own juice machine to be able to trim a little bit of that off. So I'm going to do that in this particular case. So you have the option to take care of everything. This is 50-50, about half and half, carrot and apple. And it's very, very simply put together. An amazing thing about it is, as, as you watch this, you'll see really that, that carrots, which are very dry when you squeeze them, have really, in essence, more juice uh, per weight and volume than an orange has. And I love this combination. It has a lot of pectin and pectate, pro-vitamin A, which is the carotenoids, probably the best drink of all time to nurture all your cells and tissues and glands and organs. Now I want to make probably the best combination for any individual to build up the immune system. After all, parsley is the third most nutritious food on planet Earth. And we're talking now about density of nutrients per calorie. And it's very unedible, you see. But when you have a juice machine, you can extract the properties and the substances that are locked in these leaves and the stems. And they're available to you with an immediacy in 100%. Now, when you're doing any leafy green, we mention this in our seminars. In fact, we stress it in our seminars. Never drink leafy green juice alone. It's just too potent for your liver, just too strong for your body to handle and cope with. So what we suggest is anytime you do anything green, we suggest one-fourth of the glass, no matter what size, to be parsley juice and the other three quarters to be carrot as we're going to do now with we'll put a little carrot in it, we'll put a little apple in it. And when you're doing things that are green and very difficult to extract the juice from, don't just take our pusher or plunger, if you will, and stomp down the greens. You'll get minimal amounts of juice. And since you are going to add another substance, preferably carrot juice, what we want you to do is use a carrot for your pusher when you're doing anything of this nature or sprouts. Now, here we go. Now, I want to show you how easy it is. And the juice of the carrot, as you push it on top and they touch the cutting blades with the parsley underneath, will yield a greater volume of that difficult to extract juice, you see? And this one, this one, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't drink, oh, from, let's say, a quart to a quart and a half. And uh, Did you notice this? Did you notice how this juicer has such, such a large opening or well that you can literally take two carrots, and if they're small carrots, three carrots, and you see? And push them through with one plunger full. Now, here's a little bit of an apple. And I love this drink. Now here, here's the king of the greens. It's the finest stimuli 
of the peristaltic action when you eat a nice tossed spinach salad, magnificent fiber, which we Americans have such, such a small amount of on a daily basis. When it's raw, it's the finest rebuilder of the intestinal wall. And what it does primarily, it stimulates the peristaltises which on an average beats about 22 beats per minute. And, and therefore, it becomes the greatest drink in the world when you suffer from, quote unquote, irregularity. To yield this, and I'll show you two ways. To get the yield, the better yield, if you take and push the, with the plunger just the spinach leaves alone, you'll get a yield, yes, and I'll show you that. And you'll, you'll see the green juice come out of there. And I want to make you aware that that green is your lifeline. All life on planet Earth emanates from the green of the plant. You have your biogenics here, chlorophyll, which man can't duplicate. It only comes from uh, solar energy and photosynthesis. Plants create that, you see, and they're healers of the body. Now this is something, you can do it this way if you choose, but this is a diff more difficult way. Now when you see the green come out of here, I want you to know this is not just chlorophyll. This has carotenoids, it has B-complex, it has the flavonoids. It has everything you need to build capillary walls. Now I'll show you the next way to do it. This is, this is when I take the spinach. And again, I'm going to show you, like I showed you early on, of the spinach going in with the carrot doing the plunging, you see? The carrot. So we'll take two carrots and plunge it down. Is that easy? I mean, when you have your own juice machine, you've got life in the palm of your hand. You just have to put it to use, that's all, you see? This is actually, if you think about it, this is liquid flowing health. You know, so many people, so many people ask us during our seminars and our lectures, uh, what do we do about a stomach ulcer? And that's my expertise. When I was just a young man with cancer of the bladder, the company I represented sent me on to Stanford University. It was 1948, and I was very honored and privileged to work with Dr. Garnett Cheney, showing them the methods of using a certain juicer that was very intricate. And oh, he was treating every stomach ulcerated patient with freshly made cabbage juice, because cabbage has something very special in it. It's an it's a glut acid glutamine, a very constituent of protein, and we found that that he healed almost a hundred percent of all stomach ulcer by giving every one of his patients a quart of freshly made cabbage juice daily, and he spaced it out. He gave an eight ounce glass in the morning, an eight ounce glass for lunch, eight ounce glass midday, eight ounce glass early evening, and it was phenomenal the results that he had. And we have it all documented, you see. Now I'll show you how to do a cabbage when you get to the now if you had an outer leave of cabbage, and I, like, I love for you to buy cabbage heads that still have the leaves before the produce market stripped it off to get to the solid, good-looking part of the cabbage. The outer leaves have more of the nutrients. So let's say that you found a cabbage head with an outer leaf, either red or green, you see, uh, as far as the cabbage coloring is concerned. Then you take that outer leaf, billowing as it is, and you roll it up or fold it, if you will, and push it down through your juicer. Now, remember what I said, when you're doing leafy greens, cabbage is a little more solid, but still, I'd like for you to push a carrot over it. However, for the moment, I'm just going to make straight cabbage juice for you by cutting a piece of cabbage. But here's the leafy green wadded up, and I'll show you how easy it is to make. And that's a difficult thing to do for most juicers to do any kind of leafy green. There's nothing to it. It's as easy as a piece of parsley as far as we're concerned. Now, with the cabbage, you can cut it into a section, and here's your solid part of that head as you push it in. If you can't tolerate the straight, the straight cabbage, then we recommend what we call at Stanford University the three C's, and that's cabbage, carrot, and celery. And all you, all you need to put in here is one rib or one stalk of celery. And what this drink does now, this particular combination, this keeps the cabbage kind of palatable for the body. And you won't have that, that reaction from, even though the sulfur is raw, you won't have that, that bloating reaction uh, from the straight cabbage juice. We find this very acceptable to heal stomach ulcers.
the largest organ of the body, internal organ. The largest organ is your skin, but the largest internal organ of your body is your liver. And I'm making you now a drink to rejuvenate the liver, to, to cleanse it out. After all, about 5,000 quarts of blood go through the liver every day. And this drink is magnificent for you. And it, it can build up your hemoglobin, your red blood cells. Now, when you're doing beet juice, I, I want you to use the leaves and all. Now, you have an option since you have your own juice cannery. You see, anything that's a little bit off you, uh, or, or spoiling, you can trim it off. And, and you're in control. See, the only way you can be sure is to make these juices on your own volition. Now, this drink you should love. Now, here's your beet. You'll see the redness come out. It's almost like a maroon red. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to make you a sensational drink out of beets and apples. Now, I don't want you, again, ever to drink straight beet juice because beets have in it a, a special kind of acid that has the propensity to kind of uh, uh, foul up your larynx. It's almost as though you, 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 you have laryngitis because that acid's settling in that region of your, your voice box, you see. So when you're ever doing beet juice, dilute it. Carrot and beet, carrot, celery, beet, carrot, parsley. In this particular case, we put a half of a beet and about four apples. And the pectate, or if you will, the pectin of the apple uh, works in, in, in unison with, with the beet. And what it does, it dissolves, it dissolves, it cleanses the liver, other organs of your body also, but it rejuvenates your liver. You couldn't do anything better for your liver uh, than make this carrot, this, this, this beet and apple juice. And if you want to, you can add some carrot, some celery, some parsley. These are kind of different here. String beans are, if you will, the larger version of the called pole beans, and the baby cabbage things that uh, we call Brussels sprouts. Now, the drink itself, the drink itself is kind of odd tasting, so rather than take it straight, you can, and I don't mind it, but rather than take it straight, I urge you all to put a little celery, perhaps a little carrot, a little parsley, whatever. But I want to say just another word about, about the Brussels sprouts. Our own National Cancer Institute tells us that these particular things, as all cruciferi, cruciferous foods, cabbage, uh, broccoli, uh, cauliflower, they have very special properties, substances. And when these substances from the fiber reach the bloodstream, they are the greatest protectorants against breast cancer. They call the substance it's an indole. They call it indole-3-carbonyl. And also, it protects us against colorectal cancer. Now, I'll show you how easy it is to make this into juice. Now, we have an opening that's quite large, and you can take the average Brussels sprout and just push it through there. So, now, here's your string beans, a handful of them. And it's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty okay drink. It's not the greatest tasting combination in the world, but when you're making this drink, here's your carrot going on in. You can take the string beans and Brussels sprouts singularly if you want to, but I prefer that you make it a little more tasty, a little more palatable by adding some carrot. You can put a piece of green bell pepper, a little parsley, maybe a piece of a radish or whatever, you see, to, to make it taste a little better. I always like to add to this a little bit of uh, carrot and a, a, a rib or, if you will, a stalk of celery. Mm -hmm. And whenever you get a drink, like Brussels sprouts and string beans, or by the way, if you want flavonoids, asparagus juice, to give it a little more palatability, I always like to temper, sweeten it, if you will, that juice down with a piece or two of apple. Take a good look at this combination. I'm holding it out for you. This is a carrot and beet and a cucumber. And uh, to me, one of the best diuretics, there's not too many combinations or, or, or elixirs that are as good as the carrot, beet, and cucumber. And what you do, you put about equal portions of it. I would put one third of each in a, in a glass. And this combination is primarily to rejuvenate the liver, to cleanse the liver,
And it's also a terrific combination for the urinary canal, bladder, kidneys, prostate, urethra, marvelous combination. And cucumber on its own volition is kind of blah, sure, of course, but when you mix it, then it becomes again palatable. And I'll show you how to do this. Now I'm gonna cut a piece of cucumber. We're gonna use the skin. Now you have to be very aware, you have to be very aware of a cucumber that has that greasy feel to it. That's paraffin, that's petroleum. You might, in that particular case, have to peel it and sacrifice a lot of the food value and the enzymes, of course, that lie in and just below the surface of the peeling. So try to buy a cucumber that isn't waxed like this is. And if you have a problem with wax, let me give you a little, a little helpful hint in your kitchen. When you get anything that's waxed, you might, with a pair of tongs, hold the cucumber. Now, the tongs come way out. Now, have some water boiling on the stove. And I want you to, with the tongs, so you don't get burned or have the water splatter, it's boiling water, and I want you to dip the cucumber into that boiling water for about five seconds only. You can't leave it in there a long time, like a, a half a minute or even 15 or 20 seconds. You'll lose the enzymes, you'll kill the properties of life. You see, the chemical catalyst, the life force, the electrolytes will be gone because they have a low heat tolerance. So by doing and dipping in there for about five seconds and taking that cucumber out, and then maybe waiting another five, six seconds and dipping it in again, you might dissolve the wax. However, I'll have a suggestion for you now. What I think you should do, if you need the cucumber for any specific condition, then I would probably opt for the hot house or the hydroponic cucumber that isn't wax. It has a cell, you know it's long, and it has a cellophane kind of a, 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 a wrapper around it. Now I'll show you what we do with the cucumber. You take the cucumber, you cut it into a long length, and then you split it in half again, and you push it right through. This is very simply done. Put both pieces in, and then, then you peel it. Okay. And here's your beet coming through, and there's a leaf in here that I didn't think was too appetizing. Can you see this? That's the beauty of being your own cannery. You can monitor everything. See, this is the only way you can be sure is to make these juices on your own. So you can cut a little bit of that you can cut it off, get rid of it, and put nothing but the best produce. And you can, you can go out and purchase the number one, the number one produce, extra fancy, grade A produce. Now, what I'm gonna do with the, with the, with the uh, beet is push it through again, because I have some leaves to contend with, and I'm pushing this through. Great drink for your liver. Great drink as a diuretic. Great drink as a blood cleanser and a hemoglobin builder. Fabulous. You know, for centuries and centuries and centuries, we've all known that garlic is probably one of the greatest foods in the world to kill foreign bacteria in your intestines and colon. And researchers, of course, know for many, many years that garlic is probably, and there are a lot of tablets and, and capsules made from garlic extracts, uh, one of the most popular products in the world to, to reduce high blood pressure by, you see. Now, garlic, you'd never think of, of juicing it. And I want to say something else. The latest research has indicated that the substances in the garlic of the fiber, when it gets into the bloodstream, now you see what I said? The substances of the fiber of the garlic, when it gets into the bloodstream, now keep in mind, the fiber does not get into your bloodstream. The fiber eventually, after it's processed to take the juices out, has to be evacuated, eliminated. But the substances that are locked in the fiber, once they are released, they become permeable. They penetrate through the intestinal villi of the third part of the small intestine called the ileum, through the portal vein into our liver to reach the bloodstream to feed your body. It's essential. That's the way the body works. And they found out that there are substances, and yet unidentified substances, but one of them they just identified is called quercetin, that, that prevents and helps prevent many different kinds of cancer. So you want to use it every chance you get. Now, one thing about garlic, a garlic clove, and I suggest when you're using garlic not to, not to take the whole bulb, but one clove at a time till you build up a tolerance, you see. And we've all known another thing, too. Uh, in the ancient days, they used to consider garlic as a great aphrodisiac, you know. 
I think it probably has those properties. But when you're doing garlic, I'd like to offer a suggestion. Uh, you're not going to drink garlic straight, therefore I recommend that you mix it with a variety of other vegetables. And when you're doing garlic, it's kind of nice not merely to drop the garlic clove inside, but fold up some greens, in this particular case parsley, and kind of nest, nest that little clove of garlic in the hopper or in the well on top of the parsley. And then you'll take, as I do garlic, a couple of carrots and push it through. So I'm gonna take the liberty to make me one of the great recipes. And I want you to, to enjoy viewing this. This is a great combination. This is the easiest way to accept garlic, you know. And when you drop the garlic clove, just drop it in. And instead of using the pusher, I recommend it wholeheartedly that you take the carrot and you push it through. Now that will extract you know, I'm, I'm uh, above, hovering above this opening, and the garlic's already been pushed through, and you can get the aroma of some of the ethylene gases that come through. Now, to make it more palatable, I'd like to add something that's very beneficial and works in unison with garlic, and that is to take the romaine lettuce that we use so often for people that are having trouble in polluted areas. When, when, when they're around polluted, not just, not just secondhand smoke, but I'm talking environmentally polluted areas. You know, early on I mentioned the properties of cruciferi when I was talking about Brussels sprouts for the pancreas. Well, we all know this as broccoli, and there's a new product out called uh, Broca flour. It's a combination of broccoli and cauliflower, and that's still one of the cruciferi. Now, we have properties in here I mentioned to prevent you ladies from having breast cancer. That's all researched. It's all researched, and the National Cancer Institute talks about this indole substance, and they identified it as indole 3 carbonyl. And it's, it's a great tasting drink. It's a great drink uh, for your pancreas. It's a great drink for your liver. It's, it's a great drink for, for the large bowels, the colon, to help prevent colorectal cancer. And you would not think normally of, of extracting and juicing uh, broccoli. But I'll show you how simple it is. Now, bro broccoli has the seeds up here, and here's your stalk or stem, if you will. And it's quite easy to do. There isn't anything to it. And I'll give you one of the best broccoli tasting drinks. Now, I recommend to all the people that come to our seminars that broccoli, broccoli and carrots makes a marvelous, marvelous com combination. But also, if you don't, like the singular taste of broccoli and carrot, then I suggest that for more palatability and easier on it, and it'll sweeten it up somewhat, add an, a piece of apple or two. It's just that easily made. Now we all know this, of course, is a green bell pepper. And again, you'd never think very often about extracting the properties of that green bell pepper, but I'd like to say something to you about green bell peppers. Probably the greatest source of silica, earth, for, for skin texture, uh, a great, a great uh, substance to reduce inflammation of, of, of tendons and ligaments. And of course, green bell pepper has flavonoids, bioflavonoids, and they just found out as of late there might be over a thousand different flavonoids, bioflavonoids, if you will. And, and what these flavonoids do, they strengthen the capillaries and blood vessels. And flavonoids really are a variation of vitamin C. And what they do, um, they, they keep you probably from having a hemorrhage if you have uh, capillary fragility, they're marvelous to build up the capillary walls. And it's easy to juice, but it's a very potent drink. It's a very powerful drink as far as, uh, as, far as dominance of flavor. So I always like a good combination. You can, you can vary this, but I always like carrot and, and green bell pepper. But I also like to put parsley in it. I, I could put a piece of beet in it, maybe radishes to, to dry up the sinus cavities, which would be marvelous because of the ethylene gas. But we'll just do the green bell pepper along with the, the, uh, the carrot. And all I'm going to do because of the dominance of flavor factor is put about a third of a green bell pepper in here. And it's very easily done, about a third of it, just like this. And you can smell it. And it's, it's, it's got a lot of flavonoids. And I put them in with the seeds and all. 
Now here's, here's the way I make this particular drink. Carrot, two, you can put two and three carrots at a time depending on the size. Very easily done. I, I would say you can add some parsley. You can add uh, you can add a little radish to it. You can add a little cucumber, zucchini squash, Italian squash, just about a little cabbage if you will. Mm -hmm. Good combinations. Uh, use it at your discretion. The main focal point here is that that you want the silica to tighten up the skin so you don't wrinkle. Zucchini and Italian squash, even acorn squash and some of the other squash category, uh, marvelous, the extracts from them, marvelous to rebuild the intestinal wall and, and to keep the food when it's being digested and processed by your body in the process called digestion to be moving down one way and out at a normal period of time, you see. So zucchini has properties for people that are having trouble with indigestion, um, perhaps they're suffering from gastritis. This is a marvelous food. And uh, I've, I've had it straight, but I think, I think you'll like it better if you mix it with the old reliable carrot, which is the same, you know, the juice and extract of carrots are identical to, to the tissues of the human body. So that's why we use carrot juice in almost every one of our juice combinations, particularly with the vegetables. So I want to make this zucchini for you. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the uh, zucchini and split it right down the middle. And you know, using the skin of zucchini, and usually they're not waxed with petroleum or paraffin, but using the skin of zucchini enables you to, to receive and absorb all the electrolytes and, and the food properties, because most food properties lie in the peeling and just below the surface. So we're going to use and take advantage of the properties lying in zucchini. And what I'm going to do with the zucchini, I'm just going to split it down the center, you see, and take that, take that uh, zucchini and push it through the juicer, very simply, and I'm going to add a couple of carrots. And on, on, on purpose, I, 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 I have a couple of large carrots that I saved to show you uh, and give you a little helpful hint. Um, when I get a large carrot, generally speaking, with a wide diameter, what I do, I usually put that carrot in first hand with the large end. Because if I do the narrow end, if I had a carrot too large in diameter, when I attempted to push that large end through, it couldn't, it wouldn't fit. So what I do, I automatically calibrate it. By looking at it, I see that I have about a, a, a maybe a 30 second of an inch too wide of a carrot. So what I then do, I take the carrot and I slice off just a little bit of that ending, depending on how wide that carrot is. Then I drop the little piece or sliver in and I push the carrot through, you see? It's just that simple. So that's a little word to the wise. Now, you know, when you're getting, when you're getting carrots, I'll try to find a couple of them that are, that are quite a, a normal or, or narrow in scope. You can turn one or two upside down or one right side up and there, there go, three carrots with one push. See, that's very easily done. There's nothing to it. This concludes volume one. Vegetable Juice Recipes. Watch Volume 2 for Jay's favorite fruit juice recipes. Kitchenware provided by Birdines of Florida, your complete kitchen supply store. Plants provided by the Silk Greenhouse. Call 1-800-727-SILK for the location nearest you. In addition to this program, we offer a complete line of nutritional products and educational materials. To receive our latest product information, call 1-800-800-8455 or write to The Juice Man, 655 South Orcas, Seattle, Washington, 98108.